I met my ex-husband and yeah. we got married. I thought I've met my soulmate. It was definitely a lot of that sort of grandiose promises, but we seemed to really be into the same things, both into personal development. Um, we grew a business together. We had over 200 staff. Okay. Um, what were you doing? It was a training company around sort of self-help um, and, and personal development. And we had office in London, office in Sydney. So, I mean, it was, oh, wow. it was incredible. Global. I was living the dream. I was like, I love Australia. Just my whole world changed. Oh like God, the whole yeah. rug from under my feet. I was like, this is my identity. This is who I am. I, this is my job. You know, I, I run this company and I've got, you know, I, it was just absolutely. So I lost my, you know, obviously the father of my son, who I thought was my best friend. And then also, yeah, my business partner. Yeah. And then he made her a director of our company. No. no. Yeah. And then they moved into the penthouse apartment in the same block of apartments where me and my son lived. <gasps> this so needs to be like a Netflix <laughs> series. <laughs> Welcome to Wedding Mayhem. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Why are you hugging a pillow, by the way? It's just comfy. It's a nice little comfort. Right. You, were, you were hugging the, the monkey. Hugging? You were hugging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm watching too, Ameri too much American TV, I think. <laughs> How's your week been? Yeah, all right, yours? Yeah, all right. Cool. Got anything to say? I don't think I have. <laughs> no, I haven't got anything to say. The blinking rain. I know. It's supposed to be summer. I know. So many, so many of our brides are panicking this week, but luckily all our weddings are scheduled on days where it, it's scheduled for some. So fingers crossed. I thought we could do these. Do you remember what we did this on Saturday? Yes. So we've had loads. So these cards we've got in the boutique and we're asking guests um, while they're sitting there waiting for brides to come out in their dresses um, to write us a question. Um, and God knows what else they've put on them as well. It's funny. <laughs> I literally come out the changing room with the bride and all the guests are sat there like that. Scribbling. I was like, what is she doing to these I know, people? I know, I know. And then, and then, you know, we've given them one each and then and then halfway through, they're like, oh, I thought of another one. Yeah. You know, so it's been quite good. It's so, a good idea. She, so, so, go on, take, take one. What is it? It's going to be able to read people's writing. Oh, does, does something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue still apply? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like most people do do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. And the um, the sixpence as well. A lot of people are forgetting about the sixpence. Yeah, someone had their um, mum as their something blue. I love that. What, what, what in the outfit? Yeah. We've got our something blue right oh, here. We have. That's a good introduction to <laughs> our know, guest. Look at you. Right Slide in. that in. Um, <laughs> love it. Why are you <laughs> laughing at me it's again? So, <laughs> so welcome to Wedding and Mayhem oh, at Sarah fun. Davison. Yeah. Have I said that right? You have. So, <sighs> Davison, yeah. Don't know how many times. You can never get names no, right. No, and I practice it all the time I'm and insane. I still get it, get it wrong. It's, uh, <laughs> Don't worry. I'll let you do it as well. I know. We <laughs> did. We sorry. did. I said, right, you do it this time. And she sat there and went, I don't know what you're called. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, welcome. Um, See, so you've got a very big title. <laughs> so, would you like to tell us what you do? Yeah, so I'm best known as the divorce coach, which is a really catchy job title, isn't it? <laughs> um, but that was kind of given to me, I think, by the, by the media because of what I do. So I help right. people to cope better by with any kind of breakup, yeah. divorce, heartbreak, um, as well as domestic abuse, toxic relationships, narcissistic abuse as well. Right. Wow. Now that's a bit heavy for a wedding podcast. Yes. But yes. the reason why, you know. <laughs> We're going dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think, you know, it's not all, you know, flowers and blooms and, you flowers know. Flowers and it's blooms. Flowers and blooms. <laughs> and it's sunshine and rainbows. Yes, you know. You know <laughs> flowers and blooms. When people plan a wedding, everybody thinks that it's all plain sailing, it's all happy. Showers and dooms. Yes. Oh, <laughs> right, showers and dooms. <laughs> I've got a new strap like that. But it's not plain sailing. You know, there are a lot of, yeah. you know, factors is in this not you know we're dealing with divorced parents mm. you know or divorcing parents yeah. we've got you or ex-partners or, ex or they've ex you yeah. know had an awful uh, some of the stories i've heard from brides mm. past relationship and yeah. now they've met someone who's up yeah. but then it would be like trying to navigate the new relationship with yeah. you know if they've got kids or stuff together with the ex yeah yeah i think weddings can be quite you know it's like christmas isn't yeah. it it's like a fraction yeah time i mean it, it, you know it sounds depressing but actually what what i do and i've trained over 600 coaches around the world to do it is all about self empowerment because mm -hmm. life is going to throw you challenges whether that is a breakup or stress with a family member or illness bereavement whatever 
and it's about taking your power back and knowing that you can control how you feel just mm. because something difficult is happening there's a challenge something awful has happened or someone has behaved in a hideous way towards you doesn't mean that you have to then be less than or carry that around with you all the time yes you may always have those emotional scars but you can definitely change that into something positive grow from it and become happier and more confident so it's more about sort of that pain to power journey that trauma to triumph and turning any of life's challenges into something that actually can be a gift with a bit of hindsight yeah. and help you go on and learn from that so that when you get married again or again in your case then <laughs> Many yeah. seconds are we in? Get married again or again? Look at him just laughing his head off there. I paid her to say that. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, I did. Well, in my dream last night, it looked like it was going to be again. You know, that was brilliant. Come on, frisky little thing. thing. Frisky little. <laughs> but yeah you're, 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 you don't want to be happier right and that's yeah. that's the message it's, it's not all doom and gloom and it feels like it at the time obviously but but there are lots of things you can do to shift that around so that you're not repeating the same mistakes or feeling sad when you've got no need to yeah, yeah i mean there are a lot of voices within any relationship and, and not only the relationship of the, of the couple it's the outside voices um, that have an impact on, yeah. on, on relationships, you yeah. know, and it's just, um, you know, we struggle with it in the boutique where, you know, the brides are coming and going, oh God, I've got this person in my ear and I'm not sure now I'm doubting myself, you know, and, yeah. and it can be on their relationship. Yeah. Yeah, well, mm. everyone has something to say, don't they? And we don't listen. I mean, if I'd listened to people when I was getting married, I probably wouldn't have got married. Um, <laughs> yeah, it might have been a good thing, but, you know, I would be doing what I'm doing now. So, exactly. but, I mean, we don't, do we? We need to make our own mistakes. Yes. yes. Um, but also, we don't want to repeat the same mistakes. I right. Think that's the important thing. We've got to learn the lessons from the past. Otherwise, we'll just keep repeating them. So how, how can we not repeat what we've done in the past? Well, I think it's, it's a really good question because we have to do the work. I mean, a lot of people go through breakups and the number one human need is love and connection, right? So everybody mm -hmm. needs that. So what happens when you lose a partner or you break up them, whether it was your decision or not, that love and connection with that intimate partner is now gone. Mm -hmm. And so the tendency is to think, right, the biggest fear is I'm going to be alone. No one's ever going to love me again. How do I get that connection? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the tendency is to jump straight into well, something. Well, plumping else. is is a big thing. <laughs> what? what was that? Plumping. Oh, we said pumping. <laughs> so did I. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pumping's a big thing. <laughs> You, know, you, you plump for something, the nearest yeah, thing yeah. that comes along, and, and yeah, so they all settle and they go, yeah, Well, you'll, you'll do. And actually, the criteria for you most try and make it work, or you shoehorn it in, yeah. And I think the criteria for most people is two things that I see after a breakup the criteria for a new partner is one, they have a pulse. And two, they show them a sign of affection. And then they do what yeah. I call limpet mode. They sort of sucker yes. themselves to this poor person, thinking, right, I'm never going to be alone because now you're here. But that mm. misses a whole stage of work that you can do to really work out not just what you want from a partner. Because I think most of us know what we want, what we're attracted to, you know, yeah. tall, dark, handsome, short. Well, on the outside. Guys. Yeah. You know. But what you need is so much more important. Right. And that's where you're learning from past mistakes. So you're looking back going, OK, well, I need someone who's a bit more sensitive or somebody that's good with my kids or somebody that's emotionally intelligent or someone that's got their own financial independence maybe whatever it is for you learning that so that you don't just go for the next person that that shows up with a pulse so yeah. you're actually thinking that through that's like when we was i was watching um married at first sight i don't know oh, if I you love watched that. it love but it. when they oh, were saying are you watching love triangle oh, don't jump to subject Sorry. talk about it later God's sake Grow up. Um, Can we have a session later? Yeah. yeah. Um, on um, Married at First Sight, where they're saying um, they're not kind of what I want, like typical type, but they are what I need. Yeah. And that just hits the nail yeah. on the head, doesn't it? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you've got to have that chemistry, mm -hmm. but also if you're missing those foundational things, that is exactly what you need to be successful in a relationship. That's where you learn. So that's doing the work. That's to take it back to your question, like how do you do that? It's really looking back and saying, what was I missing? And what would I like more of from my next partner? Mm. And just exploring that. And then you can, you know, think about it when you meet people. Is this the person that's going to give me that? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be Mr. or Miss Right either when you're dating. It could be Mr. or Miss Right now. And I think a lot of people then date 
because they think that oh, this has got to be my next really serious partner. Mm. Yeah, well, actually, that's a lot of pressure, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's not much fun, is it either? No. Because you're putting so much pressure on yourself. Is that because we see other people around us, you know, in their own little happy bubble, and we're like, oh, social we want media. that. Yeah, the yeah. social media and all the million dating apps that. Yeah, my yeah. sister I told me a while ago dating scene's quite grim at the minute. Yeah. I hated dating. Did you? Yeah, I absolutely hated it. I mean, I didn't really date. <laughs> She's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. well, because but I think probably I did what, what you you said, yeah. but I, I, you know I was pretty lucky Pumping. on who who I did plump for yeah. and they plumped for me, you know yeah, because yeah. you know <laughs> I swear that's not even a saying. It, I bet it is. We'll Google it later. Um, but you know I was lucky enough that these people were it, there at the at the yeah. right time. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and I was lucky with the pe- the person um, people that I married. <laughs> <laughs> the people. <laughs> Whole gang, <laughs> but then when I, my second marriage ended, and then you know the girls are like, "You need to go on a, a, a dating app," and I'm like, "No, no, no," um, because you're only dating the circle that you're in, and when you're busy people, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very hard to yeah, widen your true. circle. Yeah, so yeah. you're dating people that you that your friends already dated yeah. and, and stuff like that. <laughs> but for me, dating was horrific. That, yeah, I mean, the, I can totally see that. I mean, they. You, the thing is, if you've done the work and you know what you're looking for, then you can kind of go in with safety. How do you know what you're looking for? Well, because I think it's essential to do the work if you want to increase your chances of success. If you just want to go and have a bit of fun, that's a different thing. But yeah, if you yeah. are actually thinking, you know what, I actually would like to eventually, not even now, but yeah. eventually meet somebody that is going to make me happy, that I have a, a good, successful relationship, a healthy, successful relationship with, then you've got to understand what you need, which won't be what you needed 10 years ago or even five years ago maybe sometimes even a year ago because that relationship will have changed you especially if they're toxic relationships because that's where you really have to learn because otherwise you just repeat those patterns over and over but people are not um an obvious toxic person no and they don't show up on day one as they do on the last day of a relationship that's for sure because we'd never date them but yeah but but that's the whole that's the whole um education piece that we need to do about what is abuse what is an unhealthy partner because yeah. abuse is not physic just physical it's no mental. abuse is i mean that we, we've changed the term it used to be domestic violence we used to talk yeah. about uh, but a lot of people then misunderstood what abuse was because as we know now there's a lot of emotional abuse coercive control is now yeah. a bit of a buzzword um it's something that we see time and time again and i'm the patron of a domestic abuse charity called the dash charity which is local for Sal, yeah. Winter yeah. Head, yeah. Uh, um, Winter Winter head yeah Winds ahead it's catching you know, Winter Winter head. Head. on this sofa <laughs> sharon's Winter rubbing head. off of you it's, it's a good name maybe Winter <laughs> head. um maiden head and Slough. but they do amazing work for women and some men and yeah. children um to protect them but i think because it isn't just women is it is it no it's but well. it is predominantly a gender bias is there is yeah, eighty percent tends it tends to be female. So who's who struggle with abuse? But they're definitely men, and we have lots of male clients um, yeah. who come to us for for support with that. Do you think you know the, there's the, there's a higher rate for men that are not coming forward? We we've all just seen you know reindeer mm. um, and baby reindeer, baby reindeer and um, you know and you know he was very very strong at coming forward and it's brought a lot of people mm. not of men yeah, yeah, come forward yeah. and say actually that has happened to me so i don't i think women speak up more now mm. than than men do definitely i don't know i think uh, there's a lot that women won't say because yes. they don't think they'll be believed mm. that then that causes that's problems still, still yeah, yeah, yeah 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 definitely and you know re- reporting crimes i mean we know that the number of rapes re- that are reported are, are tiny compared to the real amount because yeah. we know that the police don't actually do yeah. well they haven't got the facilities to mm. to help yeah so. and, and you know the whole system needs shifting you know the whole system is something that i campaign actually at government level to try and shift some of the, the family court systems the police system it's just not working for victims of abuse no. so we need to we need to change that so that more people can come forward men or women yes. you know nothing that's important that everybody gets that um but yeah it predominantly is a female based challenge i mean that is that is a fact so yeah but i mean it's it, it as you said it can be it can be financial we've seen a lot of financial abuse 
um, awareness since uh, COVID because when people really? were locked down together, yeah. yeah, there were a three hundred percent increase in calls to the hotline for the charity that I'm the patron of because obviously people are stuck in the same house with people they can't get out. Usually, you know, you can go out to work or go to school, drop the kids off, do whatever, but you're yeah. all in the same house. So obviously that caused a lot of problems. So, you know, there's a lot of support needed. There's a lot of tools needed. But again, you can be in those relationships and not know. I've been yes. in toxic relationships yeah. and we minimalise yeah. it and normalise well, it. Well, you make stay. it acceptable yeah. so you can live yeah. with it. Yeah, and it starts off, as you said, the, the, the love bombing to get you in will be, oh gosh, you're amazing, you're beautiful, let me buy you this, let me take you there promises of you're going to be safe now i'm going to look after you for the rest of your life yeah. it's almost too good to be true yes yeah. and, and yeah. it is but yeah. at that moment we don't want to look and go well this isn't real yeah. because we're so caught up in it and isn't this what we've been waiting for and isn't this what we always dreamed of and so, i think the shame of then turning around and going actually no this wasn't right because you've told your friends this is an amazing man you yeah know, and, yeah and, yeah you know. But also it's difficult yourself because there is this toxic cycle you get pulled into. So they'll be incredible, you'll have these great times and then something will happen which is unacceptable within a relationship. And that could be just calling you a name, it could be restricting your finances, it could be isolating you from people, it, it could be violence, it could be a sexual offence, it could be any of those things. And then you start to pull away because you're like, well, this isn't okay. I don't, I don't like this. Yeah. Mm. You pull away, but what happens then is they, it's called hoovering, which is when they do everything they can to suck you back oh, into the yeah. relationship. Okay. So either they'll say, what are you talking about? That didn't happen like that. <gasps> yeah, yeah. No, no, make no, you make a question yeah. yourself. Are you sure you're okay? Because yeah. that, you know, that's not, I would never do that. Or it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'll never do that again. I'll change. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, okay, great. And then you get back onto an even keel. Or they sometimes just act like it never happened. Yes. But then they're being really nice again. So you're like, well, yeah. I, I definitely don't want to stir that back up again because I don't yeah. want to go back there. Yeah. So it's a cycle where they know how to get you back hooked again. Yeah. So then you're like, well, he, he or she, really good person. I'm going to stay. And then these cycles start to happen maybe more frequently. And I think, you know, I, I too have been, you know, had a relationship like, like that. And I questioned myself and thought, oh, God, it's me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the bad person. Yeah, because yeah, they will you make know. you feel that way. That's, that, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and this yeah. only works if you're a highly empathetic person. Because if you're not, you're not going to tolerate that. Right? We've all got mm. friends who, you know, if they don't show up... It's like no shit, yeah. It's like, off you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, yeah. when, I, when I was going through that, I had friends that were like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, you're a strong, independent yeah. woman. You know? Exactly. Like, but if you're empathetic and you're a people person, you're yeah. like, oh, I can fix you. Or I can look yeah. after you. Yeah. Or, oh, well, yeah, maybe that was me. Can these people be fixed? No. Time. don't okay. waste your time okay. I always say if you spot the signs and that's what we, we do a lot of work on training to spot the signs of what? abuse so what are the signs well lying confusing behavior which is known as gaslighting you might have heard that term that's quite um, a, a buzzword at the moment but ga is. gaslighting is making you think things aren't the way you thought they were do you think the word gaslighting is being used wrongly in these TV shows yeah, I mean, when I train my coaches to yeah. coach people, so I, I, we've trained over 600 coaches now around the world, 27 wow. different countries. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's my mission to get these tools out to as many people as possible so that we can help more people. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of buzzwords at the moment, like narcissist. Yes. And mm. the challenge with that is there's a lot of people talking about it. But not using it correctly. Yeah, and they and it's because they've had their own lived experience, right. which is fine, and that, 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 that it's all valid. But actually... And it can be on different levels, yeah, can't it? Yeah, exactly. Can't, you know. But not everybody is a narcissist. Yeah. Right. And as a coach, it's not my job or my coach's job to, to, to diagnose anybody. Yeah. Mm. The challenge is if you're focusing on your ex, saying he or she's a narcissist, look at this gaslighting and doing this, doing this, your, all your energy and attention is on them. The only way you can move on from a toxic relationship is to unhook yourself. Mm. So you need to put that focus back on you and mm. actually on your future, where you're going and your healing journey, educating yourself on spotting the signs like the lies, the gaslighting, the mm. isolation. And it won't be immediate. Like the first thing will be, are you sure you want to see her again? Like, did you actually, mm. I'm not sure she actually really likes you. Do you yeah. think she actually yeah, does? Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, maybe it's just me. That mm. then plants the seed of doubt. It's not saying do not ever hang out with her yeah. again. Yeah. Or I hate your parents, we're not going there. It's like, oh, do you know what? I'm really too tired to see your parents this weekend. Can we, can we leave it? 
and then they create that isolation because then they have more control which mm. is ultimately what they want do, do they realize that, that they're doing yes. it they do yeah. right, okay <laughs> and this is the thing when we're in it because we, i always want to see the good side of people i don't you yeah. know you, oh, you know you don't mean to do it which is why you've been in those relationships yeah. because we yeah. always look for the best and i'm the yeah. same looking for the best going oh well maybe they didn't mean it like that or yeah having a bad day yeah or, it's or computed dad, wrong in my head yeah or something. yeah, yeah. So it's giving them a second chance and that, that's the challenge and that's how we get in and that's why a lot of people stay in those relationships. It's very hard to get out because they destroy your confidence, yes. they destroy your self-esteem, they make you feel like it's your fault, like, yeah. like either for you and for me. Yeah. Um, and then you feel so disempowered and then you're cut off from your support system and then financially you're probably being controlled in a way. Yeah. So then you think, well, you, you know, and you're probably told you won't be able to cope without me. You know, if yeah. you can't cope now, you'll never cope. So then you feel like you're completely dependent on this person and then they have full control. But to the outside world, it will look very different. To the outside world, it can look like they're the most engaging, charming person yes. in the room. And therefore you must be mad if you think there's something wrong with them because they're great. So again, you've got you, you've got the social... So the victim is looking like, you know, she's making it up or yeah. he's making it up. Yeah, yeah. And also you're walking on eggshells because you don't know when this gonna happen mm -hmm. yeah when what's gonna happen next so you can be in the best mood and then something will Just happen switch. yeah and then you're terrified yeah. you know really terrified you yeah. know I, I see clients that say to me sometimes i mean i had one recently who said well, it's okay isn't it sarah because you know i, I am scared of him but but I'm not terrified. So that's he doesn't okay. hit me. Or, yeah. Well, he was dragging her across the floor and spitting in her face in front of her two little boys. Oh, so, Jesus Christ. But she was like, but I'm not terrified. So that's okay. And I'm like, okay, well, let's break this down to what is that acceptable behavior for you? Yeah. And the challenge is we get into these relationships and we have this, if you imagine your boundaries representing what is that acceptable behavior for you is like bricks in a, in a wall. When they do the first thing that's not very kind, that could be calling you a name or being controlling. That's a brick coming out of your wall of what is acceptable behavior, your boundary. Mm. But then over time, more and more will come out. And if you're not saying, no, 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 don't, don't do that. I'm not okay with that. Then that brick's gone. And it's very hard to put that back a few weeks later. Things mm. become more habitual. They get into patterns. Mm. Slowly it's eroding away that what is acceptable behavior. So after time, there's, there's no boundary at all. But you've enabled that in a way. Now, it's not that your fault ever, like a, a no victim, it's not their fault. So that's important to know. But because of our behavior of sitting back and not wanting to get into an argument, wanting to, you know, play Have an easy life. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, well, I'll ride that out. Well, also, I mean, we've had it in the, the boutique and then when, you know, weddings have been called off, this information then comes out yeah. and, and they were like, I felt such a failure and uh, you know to have called off the wedding yeah you know and you know people have put so much effort into it yeah. so it was like the bigger picture and I, yeah you know i could sort it after the wedding we'll sort it and, yeah you know i mean the challenge is divorcing a toxic partner is so much harder than breaking up for someone who's healthy because mm. when you're going through a divorce with someone that you know is a healthy relationship but maybe it's fizzled out or certain things have happened you've grown apart you can get divorced and it's relatively straightforward these days you can do it online doesn't have to cost yeah. a lot of money and you can do it in a really amicable way yeah. I mean, gwyneth brought us a conscious on couple yeah i mean I, I, you know on my, on my two divorces what um george and i sat in the in the um court waiting room and just filled in the forms and yeah. gave it to the registrar he bought us a cup of tea ross and i did it in pizza express in weybridge <laughs> you know and just filled in the forms and everything and it was you know because it was by yeah. mutual consent and there was yeah. no point in fighting about yeah. it because you, you just make each other miserable yeah and you want that healthy compromise which is I what that's about i wanted to remain friends yes. with and i still to this day are, are very good friends with both of them they all live together now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just know that if I was in trouble, those two yeah, two guys great. would would help yeah. me out, and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. And, and we have done over the years, you know. That's so. really amazing, and that's testament to you because that's not. Well, that's and not to them easy. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not easy. That's not easy. It's not it takes easy. Takes a village. Takes a village. <laughs> when we um, talk about divorce, we're not talking about divorces in we've got married, and we're divorced. We're talking about divorces in partnerships breaking up, aren't we? Too. Yeah, yeah, any kind yeah, of breakup. Yeah. yeah, but if you are divorcing a toxic partner, a narcissist, yeah. or yeah, there's no fair compromise. They're not interested in you getting half of something. 
they, it's all about causing maximum suffering and total annihilation. So looking at it from that perspective, because I spend my days and so do my coaches picking people up off the floor who are dealing with that, because we yes. are the only specialists in the world that deal with this. And it's only because Which I went crazy. through Which is crazy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Tell but, us, how did you get into this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I've always been into self-help and personal development, so I've been coaching for nearly 30 years now. It's a bit crazy. But when I was uh, 30, I met my ex-husband, and yeah. we got married. I thought I'd met my soulmates. It was definitely a lot of that sort of grandiose promises, but we seemed to really be into the same things, both into personal development. Um, we grew a business together. We had over 200 staff. Okay. Um, what were you doing? It was a training company around sort of self-help um, and, and personal development. And we had office in London, office in Sydney. So, I mean, oh, it was wow. it was incredible. Global. I was living the dream. I was like, I love Australia. Yeah. My son was one. Yeah. And you I... You were the envy of everybody. Well, I mean, I, there were definitely red flags. Right. A hundred percent. But because I was in love because I wanted it to be, because I was 30 and I thought this next relationship is going to it's be... It's a lot of pressure for yeah, the, yeah, yeah. those milestones. I was like, yeah, this is, we can make this work. I mean, I never thought I would ever end up divorced. And I saw that as a massive failure to people, you know, because I'd never experienced it. Yeah. I, I think thought, also right. when you're doing self-help as well, you, you, you know... You, yeah, you, you, you work through it, yeah. right? And I thought we were both on the same page. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely, uh, well, I found out literally overnight because I came back, from a, came back from a trip to Australia and the best way for me to get over jet lag is to go for a run. I know you like running, it's just like, right, just go for a run. So I went to my bedside table just to get my lip balm. And as I opened it, there was a contact lens box in there. I was like, okay, I don't wear contact lenses. And my, my was side on was your round side? the side that no one really goes to because the window was So there. was it on your oh, side? Yeah. That's like me. <laughs> no yeah. one goes to my side. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm always I'm on, on the, the side, side by the window side. Yeah. I'm never by the door yeah. just in case they'll get him exactly. first. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I can jump out the window, they'll get him no, first. He's close John, to, the door. to be fair, John would run first, so you know, yeah, leave me to <laughs> So I was like, so I thought that's odd. Anyway, so I opened it up and there was a big eyelash in it and I was like, <gasps> Okay, well I don't wear those. She does, she sticks them on her dashboard no. in the van. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and I was like, that's a bit weird. Anyway, I and you don't wear contact lenses. No, no, right, okay. So, but you know, we had we had a cleaner that had been cleaning when I was away, and I thought, oh, maybe you know, I, in my head, you make excuses. You can't yeah. try and find other yeah. things. Yeah, possibly be. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. be that neurotic no. woman. and we had yeah. nanny, so I was thinking maybe she's. I, I knew she didn't wear contact lenses. I was like, oh, well, maybe she did because yeah. I was working a lot. So maybe she, you know, I don't know. So I went to the gym and I was on the treadmill, and then I started retching. And the guy came over and went, you need to go, you can't stay here. <laughs> and as I walked back, I phoned the nanny, said, do you, do you wear contact lenses? She went, what are you talking about? You know I don't. And then I got in, I phoned the cleaner, I said, do you know you came into the apartment, you were cleaning? I said, you don't work. And she went, no. And then it all started to hit me. And so that's how I realised that, obviously, he was having an affair. So that How long was... have you been together at this point? So we've been together about five years, married for almost two, two, oh I think. Would you have had him down as having an affair? No, no. You're busy people too, yeah, how do yeah, you fit it in? Yeah, yeah. So, and my son was one, right? So, oh, right. yeah, so I found out that not only did he not want to be married to me, that he'd also, he, he was having an affair with someone who was 12 years younger. Now, I was going to say who was 12 then. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> oh my God, Sharon. <laughs> you ever think it could happen? <laughs> He's got his head in his hands. Oh my God's sake, why even say that? <laughs> but 12 years younger as a woman, you know, that that's not, that doesn't yeah. help, right? Yeah. Because you kind of no. look, and then she was stunningly beautiful, so you can't look and go, yeah, obvious upgrade, you can see it. And oh, that, literally that's horrible. Like, it's fucking like, kidding me. Like, yeah. That. And she was pregnant. <gasps> oh! Yeah, I found that out. Not at that moment. I found it out eight to twelve weeks later. Yeah. Oh my god! How far gone? Mm, well, she just found out. So yeah, <laughs> she's now seven years pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but but I so I I mean I just my whole world changed. Oh my like god, the whole yeah. rug from under my feet. I was like, this is my identity. This is who I am. I this is my job. You know, I, I run this company, and I've got. You know, it was just absolutely, so I lost my, you know, obviously the father of my son, who I thought was my best friend. And then also, you know, my business partner as well. So everything, my whole everything. future just disappears. And that's what happens. You, you, you're you living, working towards a certain yeah. goal or a dream. And did then you that, that changed. What, what, yeah, what did you do? What happened next? Um, I, I 
went and got a lawyer and went, what do I do? And she said, you need to file for divorce. And Did I you speak like, to hey, him about it mm, first? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. you didn't? Mm. No, we Did sent a letter. There was he no was going back from you, obviously. He was away. Um, so was there ever a chat? Not for months until oh, wow. afterwards, yeah. Because I didn't see him, because then, yeah, he was working abroad and then I was working So abroad, was he living a double like, life? No, I just, I, yeah, I mean, he's been having an affair for, a, for many, many months, so... And he was madly in love. He was actually madly in love with her. So and he's still with her now? So, no. So, no. Did, she, he had two kids with her, and then, then they split up. Um, but, yeah, that time was really traumatic. I was thrown into, like, the divorce world. I was thrown into, how do you, how do you manage this? And I was so humiliated, because it was, wasn't just between me and him and some mates. You it was the whole company. I was humiliated. Yeah, I was, yeah. And then he made her a director of our company. No. no. Yeah. And then they moved into the penthouse apartment in the same block of apartments where me and my son lived. <gasps> this so, needs to be, like, a Netflix <laughs> Theory. This is and like so scandal after scandal. I can't believe it. I'm not smiling because I'm like, that's amazing. I'm like, can't yeah, believe about these it. Things. And um, he picked a really aggressive divorce lawyer. Um, and uh, and so I then chose Fiona Shackleton. He's a dear friend of mine to this day. She's an absolutely amazing powerhouse of a She's woman. She's the big guns that everyone gets in, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. Well, he got some pretty big guns. So... So yeah, and it was just a roller coaster ride um, of emotions, mainly negative ones. Um, and I spent many months crying, doing the ugly crying on the bathroom floor. Yeah, I did a lot of phoning I mean, my but mum you're at a two a.m. Yeah, well. and also you're at that point where you can't, they can't entertain themselves, right? No. So, so if you leave them there, they're going to be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so in fact, that was a really good thing for me because I had to get out of bed and I had to kind of pull myself yes, together. Yes, it is good. And my lawyers were telling me, you've got to go to the office. You can't not go to the office. You need to see what's going on. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm walking through those doors with everyone looking at me knowing. What's happening? It was just and every did those, day. Did those people know what was happening before? A lot of them did. Out, yeah. Saying that, he'd have yeah. to walk through there looking like an absolute no, dog. But no, they, but I don't think they do. They walk they do, through there, yeah. you know, Billy... Yeah, I mean, he was genuinely in love, genuinely very, very happy. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, yeah, it was more a case of, look, I'm so happy I found the one. And, yeah, yeah she's still here, but she won't be here for long, kind of thing. Yeah. Which was, you yeah, know... Was, was he expecting you to go? Yeah, and that's what I wanted as well. So, we, yeah, we, we figured that out, but we went through two and a half years in the high courts. Jesus. Which was really painful. So, I learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot the hard way. And a lot of things I wouldn't recommend anyone ever did like you know what? getting the big gun lawyers yeah i love fiona she's a phenomenal lawyer for certain cases you definitely don't need to spend that kind of money yeah. on, on getting divorced you do not um also they need to hire you yeah i mean or... you're much better off either me or one of my coaches yeah who who, who get the process and can, can give you the advice like get your ducks in a line you know this yeah. is the sort of thing you need to be looking for i mean i learned so much the hard way so much um and the emotional roller coaster was unbearable and I remember I'd had to go out to Sydney to our Australia office and I the cleaner had said to me he's had he had this woman here after you left the last time Anywhere. and I was like yeah and I was like oh wow and I, and it just got too much and so I did and I the cleaner up. know yeah Bloody so and a lot of people knew, right? A lot of say, people yeah. knew. So when I when I then was it's on the beach, it's a very awkward position to be in. Though, yeah, isn't it? it's very lonely. Yeah, it's very lonely, um, and you don't know who to trust because obviously they and and they're all you know a lot of them are really decent people, but they were put in a very difficult position. Mm. And this you see this with lots of breakups. So I, I went for a walk and I sat down on Balmoral Beach, and it's the most beautiful beach. You know they have cockatoos landing like like we have sparrows or pigeons they've got cockatoos landing freak you out well. that would oh, I <laughs> should be running out the ah! <laughs> just so beautiful and then the white beaches and yeah. and i sat there and i thought right i'm done with the ugly crying i'm done with the phoning my mom at 2 a.m i yeah. i have to find a way through i'm a coach i know that i can get through this but i just don't know how there's no i'd looked there was no there were no tools there was nothing to say do this do this do this and i thought well, i'm gonna have to create it so that's what i did i basically combined my I, 15 years of coaching at that point with the divorce process and sort of created a toolkit of what to do to get you through the different you know the anger the jealousy the sadness the crying you know the the neediness the fear of the future um and then you know how to navigate a divorce process and what definitely not to do what to do um how to fast track that recovery that heartbreak as well you know especially when you're staring it in the face every day yeah. with them parading it's around like rubbing your nose in it yeah yeah 
Yeah, so, and especially when the baby's born and all those things, oh. that's just, you know, and then your child has a half sibling, there's all those things. Yeah, you're like, trying to manage that, yeah. you know, to make sure yeah. that. And then yeah. your child going to them and that yeah, co parenting oh relationship, all mm. those things. So, having lived through all that myself, I was quite capable then of putting things together You're right I'm gonna work out how to get through it test things and a lot of things didn't work and then I found things that did and I was like great so I wrote my first book Uncoupling and it became a bestseller yeah. and it kind of took off from there to be honest that kind of I started running retreats and the Daily Mail got hold of them and that's where the name came from and the yeah. it just all sort of spiraled because there's nobody really doing this and then yeah. I realized would you suggest that couples do this before they get married like something, I mean, something like yeah. that. I mean, I definitely like a couples think, therapy. Yeah, I've been asked just, just yeah. to to give advice to couples and to the Dubai government actually are looking for someone because they've got a high divorce rate and yeah. they have asked me to consult to see how we can reduce the divorce rate yeah. by learnings from the divorce coach yeah. of what not to I do. I mean, it's big like, in America, yeah. isn't it, where they go for you know coupling sessions. Yeah. Is it you know yeah. it's an acceptable thing? Yeah, just just do it here. It. yeah but it's not it's not this. long enough, and, no. and you know mm. they're going because they need to get married in the yeah. church. They're not going because they want to you know to make sure yeah. that their relationship is solid before Absolutely. they take that next step. Yeah. And I think it's really important. Yeah, I do. You know, we see some things in the boutique that you know we're like oh god you know and I've been years you know we've been there 22 years and years later we we get the bride come back and she's remarrying again going oh my god and things like yeah. you've said yeah we've, I've had a bride that went back to her house and found it's not funny it's unbelievable. and it split the family big time yeah. and, and half the family were divided on that side and and you know and, and that's navigated. painful because you very... lose the other side like your in-laws yeah, yeah yes. they were a close family yeah you know, but again, really close <laughs> too close but um you know 10 years later she's back in and, and you know and she's learned you know and, and stuff so yeah you know but i think if they'd had that yeah, initial. absolutely. I mean, there's definitely things you you know that will help a relationship, like looking at your languages of love. Right? Do you communicate love in the same way? Do you know about yeah, what is this? Yeah, so I do touch. see it, and I know that I'm in weddings and stuff like that. But mm. I, you know, when it's portrayed on the, the TV programs, I just want to stick my finger in my throat. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it is icky, and it's like you know. Well, no, it's why is it touch icky? words of mm. affirmation. Um, what's the other one? Uh, acts of time. love. Yeah, oh mine is feeding. <laughs> it's like what was that one? No, I don't think it is. No, no. I feed them. <laughs> yeah, pumping quality time. But yeah, you know, the, the way that the why that is so useful is because you know, and I see this with people. They say, "Well, I didn't feel loved." Um, and it, you've got to break it down. Like, what is your number one and number two go-to way of showing love to your partner? Because that'll be how you feel love. Mm. Yeah. So for me, I like I, I I say to everyone, "I love you, love you, love you." If they don't say it back to me in a relationship, I don't feel loved. Now, it doesn't matter if he's mowing the lawn twice a, twice a week, bringing yeah. me cups of tea, doing all these lovely things for yeah. me, spending loads of quality time. Yeah. I might be, you haven't, you haven't told me you love me today <laughs> at least five times and in a certain intonation and not just when I've said it to you first. You know, we all have little rules. Yeah. So sometimes you feel unloved when the other person is doing... Yeah, is doing everything they can in yeah, their languages yeah. of love. So if theirs is acts of service and they're making the cups of tea. Well, is it, if I don't get my cup of tea in the morning, that is yeah, off. Yeah, see, I get a cup of tea <laughs> from John every morning. Yeah, same. But then John's is touch, like, he'll love to sit and cuddle and I can't bear it, oh, like, yeah, John's without like being that. horrible because I've got, like, a child all the time and so I do just like you my never, own space. You never used to like that when we were in the shop. Like, no, I'm just hands not very like that. But, but, I, then, but I hug them all in the morning. As soon as they come in, it's like a hug in the morning. Yeah, I'm just like, just give me space. And Jessie was like that, wasn't she? Yeah, Jessie's like that off me get off me but then but I know that's hard. his thing so I know if he needs yeah. a little cuddle or and then he knows mine but I haven't seen someone in ages I'll give him a big hug and yeah. stuff but yeah I, I just like when I'm sitting and I just like my own space like no one be loud. No but you one say touch. that, but you you spend half your time. I'm, actually, I'm edging towards you today. But you, when we're on here, by the end of the program, she's literally on my lap. It's so you like to, to be get close. to the guests. Oh yeah. Pissing me off. She's head blocked me about ten times. You've seen her with her yeah, tea, and I've, you've done it last week as well. And the guest goes like that, and I'm like, okay, I've got a cockatoo here. <laughs> So what are your top tips for our couples that are getting married? That want to make it. That want to make yeah. it, yeah. In a world full and of, sure, of divorce. You know, they get to a point where, 
you know, they're, they're so far in on this wedding planning and there's so many people involved and, yeah. and it's a lot of money now, yeah. you know, for some of these mm-hmm. weddings. And I think a lot of couples are obliged to go through with it. Yeah. It takes a very brave person yeah. to say, actually, no. And we've had it yeah. at the last minute. It's with really it. hard. It mm. is really hard. I mean, I definitely remember having a few doubts um, but yeah, I mean, there was everyone was there. I had this amazing dress, and I was gonna wear it. You're Vera Wang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna wear it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think communication is absolutely key. Yeah. That's the number one reason why relationships break down. Yeah, the, there are symptoms of of why, like um, adultery, is obviously up there. But that is all a symptom of poor communication or breakdown in communication. Right. Um, over or time. weakness. You call it a weakness? An affair? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I've worked in this field for so long and quite often there's a real reason behind why people have affairs. Yeah. yeah, if they're toxic partners, then that's a different thing. We're not talking about yeah. healthy relationships. You know, it doesn't make you, I know this is very controversial, but it doesn't make you a really bad person because you've had an affair. It's not the no, right thing to do yeah. in that scenario, but quite often... There's a different way you... Yeah, I've seen I've it. Know, yeah. I've seen yeah. it and I've got no love at home. Yeah. And they're being treated pretty badly or ignored. But just because maybe, they, they, you know, the relationship's fizzled out or whatever. And they need that. It's a yeah. number one human need. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but there's no communication there. So if you can't sit down and say, things are going a little bit off for me. Can yeah. we talk about this to yeah. really connect? Is there anything we can do? Yeah. Then, you know, you can see that. Um, so I, I, that's an interesting one. I mean, uh, having been cheated on, it's difficult to say, well, you know, yeah. it's okay. It's not okay. But there's reasons why that happens. Did you and usually look at yourself, out. sorry, and be like, oh, this is where I've gone, like you thought, yeah, well, I this picked is the where wrong I've gone. person to marry. Yeah. 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 But, you know, if we're going on your, your affair <laughs> yeah. side, you know, you know, and I, I hold my hands up, I was that mm. person. But and I, and I I was very young and I should have dealt with it differently, but I, mm. I didn't have a voice. I didn't yeah. know. You were an adulterer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I, you know, I'm not proud She's of done it. Everything, this woman. And I, but I should have communicated, and, mm. and and we both should have communicated, yeah. and and I think, had I had the tools, life would have been, you know, very very different. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, I I hear that a lot. I, you know, sometimes, yeah, we can learn by that, and if you were learning from it, that's great. Yes. Right? Now next oh time God, around, yes. do it differently, and yeah, I would 100%. definitely communicate or find someone that I found it easier to communicate with. Yes. Mm. And I think setting those rules up. As, as when you start is important because a, a, a marriage isn't just a love thing you know and love is a skill to be learned it's not just emotion to be felt mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so we, we want to be doing is like educating ourselves on how do we make this relationship work and now it, there's a business side to that it's where you're combining yeah, yeah. You're combining two lives so how do we communicate when things aren't going great do we sit down straight away you know I've had clients who I've got very different communication styles and the way that they resolve conflict. So there's one couple who I absolutely love and they're still together because we had this conversation luckily, but mm. but he, he was Greek right. and he was brought up in a very fiery, strong, yeah, yeah. strong environment. Yeah. We have um, every customers, you know, and they yeah. got off on one yeah. like, <laughs> And they basically, to st- to, if they had an argument, he mm. was brought up in an environment where you'd stay in the room, you'd shout it out, yes. throw a few things, yeah. but don't leave the room on an argument. Yeah. And that's the loving, caring, most respectful way to resolve conflict. You stay in, you fight it out, and then you sort it, and then you go oh. separate ways. Yeah. But he married a lady who grew up in a very different environment where there was very rarely a raised voice because what they would do is they would leave the room, even sleep on it overnight, yes. think it through, and then come yeah. back when you know tensions had gone down a bit and talk it through in a way. Yeah. So what happened when they were together was she would leave the room and he would stay in the room and start shouting. On his own. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the thing. She couldn't deal with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So she took herself out she's, of the situation. Yeah. She's reflecting in bed asleep. And he's just shouting. He's still in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Ranting away. But, but, you know, that that showed that she was she was saying, I don't feel loved. He doesn't love me because he shouts at me and he yeah. doesn't hear. But and he was saying, I that... don't feel loved because she walks out on me. Yeah. She's gone to bed. But actually, they were both doing the most loving, caring thing, respectful thing that they knew how to do. But Because if she opposite. fought back, perhaps that would have just... Well, up. but that's not how. So, so it's interesting. We will judge people by what we do and say, yeah. "Well, this is what I do. And yes. This is the right thing to do." Yeah, yeah. But actually, for her, she still loved him and respected him so much so that she was doing what she thought was the right thing. Yeah. But he didn't see it like that. So when mm. they got together, he goes, "What you think? That's the loving thing." She goes, "But yeah." And he was. I was like, "I don't think it's loving to shout." So on, he's like, 
but we've got to sort it out, right? And she's like, well, no, I'd sleep on it. So when we had that conversation and all those things were on the table, they could understand. Now, it doesn't change their style, yeah. but it gives them the conscious understanding that actually she's not being unkind, he's not being unkind. Yeah. It's just their way of doing things. So how do you find like a happy meeting? Yeah, how? You know, what was, yeah. what was the solution? Well, they had like a little thing they would do where when she felt he would, it was escalating, she would pull this funny, quite cute face that she had. So she would like, do this little look and that would be his signal to go, oh yeah, okay, I'm escalating. So I do it with John, and we did that, and I literally pop his nose. Ah, there you go. There you go. But something like that But it brings great. him down, because when he goes, yeah. he goes. Yeah. And then when I go, I go, yeah. you know. And he just laughs at me. Yeah. You know. And that's the thing, if you can agree something that you're both okay yeah. with, not that it's going to, because if that would do I don't think he okayed it, I think I just did it. <laughs> but then if it works, it works, right? And that's what you want. Yeah, so yeah. you've got that, right, let's no dial malice. this down before it goes there. So yeah. you, you're taking control of your communication yeah. in a way. And then you, at least you've got a better understanding. And I think most of us grow up with our ways of doing things because we learnt it from parents yeah. or learnt it from someone or doing the opposite from our parents maybe. Mm. And that's just all unconscious. But yeah. actually, does it actually serve you? And is it helping your partner and you have that long-term relationship? Or is it putting barriers in the way? Mm. So if you can overcome those things or understand them consciously, yeah. then you can do something about it. Yeah. Then it's not going to confuse you yeah. or upset you. Because yeah. you go, yeah, that does actually maybe make me a bit sad when you do that, but I know why you're doing it. Yeah. And I still know you love me. It's not challenging that foundation yeah. that we've yeah. built. Yeah. So. Oh, so talk about games. Mm. We've got a game to play. Okay, let's play a game. So <laughs> Slightly Are we talking about the games? <laughs> yeah, well, you game, yeah, we're shoehorning in things now, you know. <laughs> Give me a break, woman. <laughs> I was going to call you Amphia then. Oh, Amphia Turner. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Just tutting it. laughs> so, right, water give water. it a spin. <laughs> okay. I can bring another card out, which is gold. Oh, a date, date story. story, funny one, embarrassing one, from from me. You, yeah, <laughs> whatever you've got that's your best. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're you date you're, you're single. Yeah, single. And but dating. dating. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, date story. Yeah. I mean, there's loads. Where do I start? Um, Give us the worst one, the nicest one, and the oh finest. god, no. Let's go with one. I can tell you one. Then, yeah. Then. There's one where um, I was in a relationship. I mean, really nice guy. Um, but lived with his mum uh, still I think he moved back in because of Covid and things like that so that was the story anyway um, so, so we'd come around to mine a lot which was great I don't mind that but but it was getting to the fact where I, I was feeling a little bit you he know, was moving like, in you need to make it you make me feel special because I feel a bit like your mum here I'm like providing yeah. the food and the wine okay. and everything and he never bought flowers never bought a bottle of wine all those things I was a bit like this isn't really working for me mm. after a period of time Anyway, so don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take you out for a weekend. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take you for this amazing weekend. We'll stay in a hotel. So I was kind of hanging on to that, thinking, okay, well, he'll redeem himself, and we'll have a great. We'll have a great weekend. And he said, get there when um, like two thirty. We can check in. So get there then, and then we'll make a whole kind of afternoon and, and day of it. So I was like, okay. So he got there, and he said, right, I've just checked in. So they just opened room, so we can go up. So I was like, okay. So I had my case, and he took it up for me, and I was all excited. And as he went to open the door, he goes, oh, by the way, just to let you know, um, because we're the first ones to check in, the only room available was the disabled access room. I was like, sorry? <laughs> okay. I walked in, it was literally a bed and then like a, a, a track kind of thing. Just no, no furniture. Um, and then in the bathroom. Like a hospital room. It was a bit like a hospital room because in the bathroom, it was just a wet room. So there was just a shower and oh then everything God. was lower. So I, I, a winch or so something. I had to crouch down to do my makeup. No. And, like, and <laughs> I, I was going to toddler's bedroom. And we did a video for my friend. I was like, if he thought this was going to save this relationship. Oh, my, oh my God. So, yeah. So you weren't just allocated that you booked that. It was obviously one of the cheaper rooms. Probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know to this day, but that was oh the last How long date. did you stay with him? But that was it. <laughs> did you do the I weekend? I was the next day. Oh, I, was, next I had day. a really bad headache for the entire weekend oh and left God. early the next day. Did you get yeah. your breakfast? Uh, no, no, I was gone. No. <laughs> I'm all, all for deploy parachute exit the building and things like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I'm a climb out the window, girl. <laughs> she climbed out the window. Yeah, a few, a few times, yeah. <laughs> so Love I'm it. probably a, quick, a quicker exit than you are, you know. <laughs> uh, can we talk about costs? Costs of what? For your, your, your business, services. your services. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, I mean, for me, I have a, a wait list for me these days, so and it's it's quite a long one. So, but my my coaches, their coaches. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. so you have a. Um, uh, army yeah yeah so i've trained so many people to do what i do because this is the quickest way to get tools out yeah so we have a whole range of different um services we offer so if you want to come on an online support group we run them daily once or twice a day wow. they're only a pound an hour to come on Fantastic. and they're run by my accredited coaches and they're all specialists in breakup divorce and domestic abuse yeah. so mm -hmm. you can come on meet other people because as we said isolation so is it like an thing. open market it's like a zoom yeah it's like a zoom yeah so you come okay. on um, and you don't have to talk if you don't want to, but if you've got questions, you can get them answered. Um, if you want to meet other people going through similar things or connect yes. with people, make some friends. I mean, they're incredible. You get such amazing feedback from I those. I think the feeling good. of not being alone, yeah. that it's not just you, is exactly. quite important. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing, especially with domestic abuse yeah. and divorce, you do feel very mm. isolated. Um, and then we have one-to-one -one coaching as well, which is ninety-five pounds an hour, which is really good for this kind of coaching. Really um, and with us, it's not therapy, so you're not signing up for months. You can have one session. Right. You could have, you know, two or three. And some people, if it's you know domestic abuse and it's the beginning of a journey, it could go on forever. But we're there to to support you and help you through yeah, those processes. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. And how do you become a coach? Um, so yeah, again, you can go onto my website, saradavison.com. You can book a call with us to find out more. Um, we've got a 12 month training, I haven't got time. training package. Yeah. I mean, it's so I'll, be a bit like, I'll be like, no, get out now. Yeah. <laughs> really lovely. So actually, if you're yeah. going through a breakup or a divorce, a lot of people then turn that, come on and say, look, I'm going through it. I really want to learn one, how to get myself and fast track myself yeah, through this, but two, people. then take those tools and create an income off the back of this. Yeah. Because it, coaching you can do from anywhere. You can do yeah. it from home, you can do it on a holiday, you can put the hours around the kids and the school runs. Um, and you know, you can you can easily, you know, make a good income. So you're, you're healing yourself at the same time as helping other people, aren't yeah. you? You know, what a yeah. great idea. And you're in an amazing community because yeah. to do this kind of work, you kind of got to be warm and friendly. So everyone in our community is so supportive, so helpful. So you'll meet a whole kind of group of friends and support system there. Yeah. Um, and you yeah, know, it's fun, you know, you can become a coach and just make an extra thousand pounds a month or you can go on and make a full-time career and, and do a yeah. lot more with it. It's Fantastic. really up to you, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It's like a massive big hug around the world. Yeah. So right around the world, you, you are a globe setter. You are everywhere. Yeah. Globe setter. So, globe setter. What's that? Globe trotter. Globe trotter. Oh, uh, <laughs> globe setter. Um, so you, can you tell us about Vegas just quickly? Yeah. Before you go. I mean, I've done. I do a lot of TV in the states. So yes. I've done like four or five TV tours, which are, are really good fun, but they're not as glamorous as. Oh, <laughs> but it's literally like I think we did. Um, seven states and 19 shows i was tired watching the reels days. yeah it is absolutely yeah. mad yeah um, but it's fun out there because they're really into personal yes. development self-help so yeah. mm. all my tools they love so um and they love a british accent out there as well so yeah, it's, yeah. it's really fun so we do all the morning shows the news shows um and talk about the different divorce trends or how to get through a breakup or dating or you know whatever so we talk about yeah i mean dating is hard and and, and and but dating is important and, and important to get it right yeah because you don't get it right then you end up walking up the aisle and getting married and then and then divorcing so. yeah and I think the sort of toxic relationship is a big topic now because there's a lot more awareness about that. Mm. So a lot of people want to... Will it ever go that. away? No. Really? And I think we're just, mm. we're just, you know, seeing more of it. Um, Training our... Te teaching our children yeah. is, uh, for me, Super. important. Yeah, and that's for them. It's you know, really important. And, and yeah. our job as coaches is to help the parents empower their kids. Yeah. And, you know, for me it's super important to train people and show people how to help their kids if one of the other if the other parent is toxic because how do you navigate that journey mm. to well, it's growing up in that relationship yeah. and, and watching that relationship yeah and enable them to and have a relationship okay. that's safe yeah. to do so yeah but on their terms where they're not sacrificing their own own boundaries is know, this something so. that will go into schools do you think I mean, I, I would love it to go into schools because actually one of the big things I'm seeing at the moment is mums of teenage girls coming to me saying that their daughters are in toxic relationships. And the it's amount mental. of control, even it. at like yeah. 17, 18, yes. that these girls, I mean, I, I, yeah. and also I go into businesses as well and work with HR directors and we go in and my coaches support businesses. So, yeah. you know, if employees are dealing with this, you can't work, you can't well, concentrate, yeah. you we, can't we, lead a team. We, yeah. we see in, in our industry, you know, you know, I, I have been incredibly lucky with the, you know, the people that have 
have worked for with me and you know and I say not for me with me because when I have gone through some terrible times you know these girls yeah. have been here yeah. you know and, and but it the, do, but it takes time yeah. out of the working hours absolutely so, you know. and it, the stats that show it reduces your productivity in the workplace up to 40 percent for three years the year that it's all falling apart yeah the year of the breakup and then the year after as you're getting used to new childcare arrangements yeah. and living yeah. arrangements yeah. Or well people are losing their jobs over yeah. it as well yeah you know, so, yeah you know. and domestic abuse as well massively impacts your ability yes. to work and focus God. so all those things do we, think, we do help with sorry i was talking to you there um working from home has mm. escalated that scenario as well, well because when you go into work you can't be covered in bruises and stuff like that yeah there's definitely working from home has definitely you know obviously opens you up to more abuse um, and also with COVID, with the kids off school as well. There's just so many issues that were caused by, by lockdown. But I mean, yeah. and now working from home is the norm, isn't it? I know even at the charity, some of the girls, they don't like coming into the office now I that know. it's open because they're like, I can't concentrate, it's too much noise. I'm much, I, I've sort of started my career working in my bedroom. Yeah. And now I'm here with all these people. I can't, yeah, <laughs> I can't concentrate. Let's be honest. <laughs> I don't like, I've, yeah. So it's very different, isn't it? It's definitely yeah. different for people these days. But I mean, it's good to know that the help is there. Yes. And that even if it's, you know, I was talking to an HR director and she burst into tears when I was talking about the um, what we offer on the domestic abuse support because she was saying this is where my daughter is, she's in this relationship, I can't help her, I don't know what to do, she won't listen to me, but everything you've said about domestic abuse I can see playing out yes, for her. God. So yeah, so I mean, so you go into... And it's going to change everywhere. their life forever if they don't sort it now yeah if they don't learn because it becomes a pattern i call it we've got to hone your radar we've got to hone your radar okay. to spot the signs because that means you get yeah, the clarity gives you power what are the signs so it's, it's looking for the the red flag so the love bombing the gaslighting is it too good to be true um looking at the controlling behavior noticing if they're trying to isolate you noticing if you feel like you're walking on eggshells or you're questioning yourself like did it happen like that because uh, yeah, i'm not sure it did or you know trust your instinct as well because if someone's looking at their phone all the time or suddenly they've got a password or they won't let you see things that they used to it's all those sort of things that, that it's a controlling manipulating mm. behavior it's mm. just really looking to spot those signs because in a healthy relationship they're going to want you to feel good they're going to want you to be happy they're going to mm. boost you they're not going to try and pull you down mm. Um, mm. or you know silence you they're going to give yeah. you a voice and even if they don't like what you you're saying they'll listen and say okay well let's talk about this so if any of those things are off then that's obviously something that yeah. we need to hone people's radars because if they can spot it they can then deploy their parachute and exit mm. the building without second chances or oh with me that'd be different you know mm. if they show you I who they are them. believe them because yeah, they will yeah. show you. I yeah. mean, there were definite signs for me. If I'd look back, definite. But everybody will say that too. There's warning signs. But we don't want to see them because we have our rose-tinted glasses on and yeah. we're thinking, I found the well, one. Well, you, you also think that this is your only option. This is your yeah. only chance. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. you know, look at me. There's lots of chances. <laughs> <laughs> it works out well, yeah. It does so work much out. pumping. So <laughs> Plumping. It's got an L in it. Plumping. We heard pumping, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so, quickly talk about your books. So yes, you I've got all these books. Well. Books. Yeah, so I've. I've no, got... pictures. no pictures. No pictures? No pictures. No, about my books. No. <laughs> Um, so uh, Uncoupling um, and uh, The Split, uh, two books I've written that are bestsellers. I've just finished another one, which I'm hoping to get out soon, called Screw You, Watch This. Fantastic. Uh, like which that. is all about And Gwyneth is a, is a fan. Also. Gwyneth emailed me and yeah. asked me to write for Goop. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. No way. Yeah, and then she put me on her grid and everything on Instagram. I was kind of crazy moment in time. Yeah, so that's really cool. So now I, I do write occasionally for them, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she said she's a big fan of my work, so I was like, oh my god, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's it's great. And then I have my podcast as well, Heartbreak yeah. to Happiness. Um, and yeah, I just it's it's about getting it. Happy. You have no time to date. Um, I make time. Yeah, I make time for, <laughs> for the right person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just realised you're probably going to DM Gwyneth. <laughs> how, how do you know I haven't already? Oh my god, you're like. <laughs> I know your friend. We're, like best friend. We're basically family now. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank um, you. Just thank quickly, you. where can everybody find you? I know you've mentioned it before. Yeah, so saradavison.com is my yeah. website and Instagram, I'm Sarah Davison Divorce Coach. Fantastic, lovely. lovely. Can oh, you thanks just... for having me. It's all right, it's all right. I was a bit scared with you coming on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't be, well, she got me in the first few, three seconds, you know, the three marriages down. Yeah, yeah. again, and but, again. It's a, but it's a serious matter, yeah. and it's something that people don't want to talk about. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's what I do differently, I suppose, is that yeah. I'm not afraid to go there. And, You're very and, approachable. Oh, thank you. I mean, you know, when you've been there and broken, it's just, yeah, and I'm not who I was back then, so I yeah. just want to show people that you can do it. Yes. You know, mm. Keep the hope, and, yeah, you know, we do have if lots I can of do tools it, you to can fast do it. track you through. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Can you ask everybody that listens? Apparently there's a lot of people listening to us at the yeah, moment. I know, um, we do so well. I know. <laughs> We've definitely got imposter syndrome at the moment. <laughs> people be like, oh, oh you guys about, don't want to get married now. <laughs> No, no, they will. Could you ask everybody to, to subscribe, rate, and review to the man pointing at the camera? Oh yes, please subscribe, rate, and review. Awesome podcast. Thank we'll you. There's the American. Awesome. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. I don't know where I'm looking. That one there. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. Okay. Aww, that's so good. I feel You're like right. I was like yeah, zoned yeah. out, just like listening like a sponge. Yeah. Uh, honestly, we've done hours.